I like it, guys. I think it's kind of nice, you know? It's, it's dated, but you know, looks nice on my head. You know, or I could go for the really big one, the really big one, and do this. All right. How about that? Beauty needs pirate, hello. What, what, what are you doing? Just trying out some new looks. Uh, huh. I've been imitated, but I will not be duplicated. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And by the way, shut up, TV. see that? Did you just see that? That was submitted by a viewer, Maria D. She did fan art for us. I thought it was kind of cute, so we put that in there. So thank you again, Maria D. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve. Mark's around. Say hi, Mark. Hey, everybody. Hey, and this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Either welcome or welcome back, and happy Saturday. It's the weekend, so we knew what that means. Um, I'm actually having just some almond milk and some black coffee, which makes it not black coffee. You know what I mean. Um, so I hope everyone's well, hope everyone's safe, look after yourselves, look after the people around you. Chilly here, very chilly. The, Just a little. It was frozen. The car was frozen in this much ice, but we got it out okay. Um, so today we are going to catch up with our fair lady, Chantal, Chantal Marie, Booty Beauty, Big Beautiful Me, the Daily Chantal, Chantopolis, Chantotler. She's acting younger and younger as the weeks go on. Food of Beauty again, of course, at present. So last week we, uh, hmm. I titled the video Desperate Ain't Cute because she, the desperate, we all know Natter by now, um, and her desperate attempts to stay in part of his life in any single way she will let him, or he will let her, rather. Um, and it's been unfortunate to watch. I've been that desperate loser in the relationship who's like, I'll take your car for gas if it means seeing you for 10 seconds. Dumb shit like that. And it hurts to be in that position. Crazy or not, I think Chantal has a little bit of a feeling somewhere under her left rib, maybe? Like, right in here, she might have feelings. Um, and to that extent, they might have been hurt by that. But so it goes. Um, let's see. She told Dee Dee last week that she can have him. And made a bunch of faces about it. Um, she already took him. As much as you ever had him. Because I think what they're doing is probably friends with benefits, which is the same that you could hope for with him. So, her words, not mine. Hair continues, as you saw. She went from bald to the chemo caps. I don't think that's the right name for it. Please correct me. It's the tight-fitting caps that people who often lose their hair to chemo will wear. And then the wig, which was butchered by the not-boyfriend um, cutting into it. He cut up a wig that was worth so much more than his rent, probably. But... Nevertheless, canceling plans on BBJ and the therapist, which all coincidentally left her free to hang out with Natter. Does that work out great? How about that? It works out just fine. Um, and the, the, the little conspiracy, that's not mine, but I've heard, that um, Natter and Dee Dee are just thinking up weird, humiliating shit between the two of them and seeing if they can get Chantal to do it. And then she does. So, mm -hmm, we'll see. So this week... Um, again, where we left off, not a, Chantal is still a little bitter about Dee Dee at the beginning of this week. Um, she's very clearly jealous, but trying to play it off like she's not. She's trying to hide it, and the worse it gets when she tries. Um, Dee Dee, you know, she says you can have him, but, you know, like, again, he isn't yours anymore. Even she said, we're not boyfriend-girlfriend. The best she can hope for is a quick slam dunk between his other engagements, so... So beginning this week, eating the fridge. Now, this has only been labeled as much. This ac action has been seen often throughout the years. Um, but she has been eating a little bit more lately. I'll talk about that in a minute. But this week kind of picked us up and she was eating in the fridge. And she's bitter and hungry. And mad at the first person who comes across her line of sight. Um, so she's sitting in the kitchen eating. Um, and basically telling people... Everyone who's taken a shot at her, telling everyone they have no lives. Dee Dee, you have no life. Natter, you have no life. You people that are on Kiwi Farms, you have no lives. I have a life. 
I've been eating for days and sitting in my house alone talking to my phone. That's not like a life. Like, I'm talking to my phone. Well, we're talking, you know. But in the real strict sense of this, I'm looking at my phone, which is on my coffee table, and the TV's behind you, and this is my couch. This is not... There's nothing behind here but the kitchen. This is just, like, you know, back up. Um, her whole gist was trying to say everyone else was doing nothing with their lives, and she was. Meanwhile, last week, Shannon was out in the D... Uh, what was it? Dominican Republic? Is that where she had gone to? And um, Nader's moving, you know, for some job opportunities, and he's got a friend to help connect him there. Um, Pete has his own channel, you know, he's doing some stuff. And, you know, she tells everybody to mind their own business, and then when they do, she jumps back into their business. <laughs> because they're like, fine, bye. Too much drama. Sorry, sorry. The faces she was making about Dee Dee when she was insulting her were very juvenile, not even adolescent. Um, because she was bruised. Her ego was bruised. That the woman that she can't stand, that she thought he'd never leave for her, well, he didn't leave her for her. Isn't that bigger hurt? He didn't leave her for Dee Dee. He left her for no one. He'd just rather be single. Wow. Okay. So, um, face it. He just likes hanging out with Dee Dee. Pretty much. And doesn't care if you like it or not. If you had girlfriend status, you could maybe flex on that. But if he was going to choose between the two of you, he would have done it by now. He's getting something out of both relationships. So, he, Dee Dee's given him something you can't. It might be a breather. It might be not coming at three in the morning and banging on the door and soliciting or, you know, trying to manipulate a chat into calling the police. And then stepping back from it like you had nothing to do with it. Like, if you weren't streaming outside his house at three in the morning, someone would have just randomly called the police. So, um, let's see what else. Like I said, he's just hanging out with Dee Dee because either they're friends or they're lovers, but it's not your business unless they make it your business, too. Because now you've said, we are not partners. We are not together. Okay? So you're not. So you don't get all the jealousy benefits. You don't get to go in and screw up his life like a jealous girlfriend if you're not his girlfriend. Otherwise, that just means you're an asshole bordering on stalker. I don't want that for you. So just take a look at it. Take a look at it. Okay. Um... And like I said, make nice with Dee Dee because it's, um, it's bad. And change your clothes. In the video where she was talking about that, she was in the same clothes for like a few days. That's how I looked a few days before rehab. You know, shaved my head because I had some sort of spiritual awakening. It was just to get people off my back. You know, I noticed that she had gifts this week from, I think it was her family members or something. Was the shaved head enough to make them think she was having a turnaround? Or did she talk about Natter and that being over? I know there was some tension between her and family members. Not necessarily over just Natter, but probably some of it. Um, because things seem to get shifty after that. So, anyway. Anyway. So, let's see. De her defenses. Now, of course, Chantal comes to her own defense, because who the hell else would except for Amber Lynn Reed, the hugest narcissist on the internet. Perhaps Chantal and her trade crowns. Um, talking about how Natter's a narcissist. This is funny. This is latching three bigots calling each other racists. It's hysterical. It's hysterical. They're all nurses. <laughs> this is when they collide. This is when the rest of us who are a little bit shy and who've had our lives maybe made complicated by a relationship or a friendship with a narcissist. This is where we get to sit back and watch it explode as they all lie to each other, play power trippy games, keep each other up at night. I'm gravy. I could watch this for a while. So there you go. Um... So, she lies. What? As her self-defense primary. Well, she's, she says she doesn't lie, she changes her mind. Okay. She says, they're trying to make me look unstable. Huh? She's looked unstable for a while. He needs love, too, when I feel bad. This is not a kitten. You didn't find him outside your house scratching at the door. He was sought out on a nap, and then paid large amounts of money, and there was, on the surface, a relationship. And now there's not, no matter how much money has been shared. And he's never going to say no. Why would he? He'll, be, he'll just say, did I ask for it? And she'll say, I did all that for you. And he'll say, but did I ask you to? No. And we're friends. So, and it's a gift. Legally, I think he, he gets to keep it, maybe. Um, 
Now, granted, Natter's a real kind of fart in the wind when it comes to people treating him with respect because I don't really like the guy for a thousand reasons. Nothing to do with her alleged abuse, physical, whatever it was with that. He's just not that kind of guy. And I'm sure I'm not his kind of guy. So respectful distance. I'm glad there's a border for both of us. Um, <laughs> but nevertheless, she still goes on live and complains that stuff should be private and things should be private. And then when they have a fight, nothing is private of his. A few things that embarrass her, she'll say, and then she'll try to hang him out to dry. It would be a nightmare to date someone like that. It would be a nightmare if every time Mark and I had a discussion, he went live on our channel and told you what a horrible person I was. That would be bad. Oh, you're getting me thinking here. That would be bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying is all. Oh, what and by the way, of clips, thank you to Just Saying. I hope you're doing much better. Throw out a, a well wish, a prayer, whatever you do, um, their direction. And what was else else I want to thank? BB, BBQ. There was a couple other sites I pulled um, reviews from, aside from just watching her very long streams. So um, let's talk for a little bit about lying. <laughs> what would that have to do with, with Hootie Beauty? Lying liars lie. Chantal had made plain when she was being honest about addiction, saying, yeah, addicts lie. She's still dealing with some behaviors where she's using substances to feel better, as you could see by the smorgasbord that she's been having this week in the absence of other things. Now, she's got a bunch of edibles. I don't know why she's not, you know, totally zonked out. She's been her a normal level of zonked out, but not crazy. She did have a couple things this week she probably needed to be sober for, according to her. She was doing a collaboration. Today, she's in a hotel getting ready for a collaboration with Carly Steele allegedly another channel that she's allegedly going to collaborate with that's the story anyway um and she's in windsor getting ready for that so her defense when lying is that she doesn't lie she changes her mind okay and that lying is not the same thing as changing your mind um remember who changed their mind before you drive up to his house in the middle of the night and demand property and gaslight subs into calling the police he didn't show up at your house he didn't show up in the middle of the night. He's there in a fixed place that without a ride, he can't leave. So he's not, like, coming for you. You go to him. You know, at the very beginning of this, I, I was thinking more about domestic violence. And I was thinking more about her safety and trauma bonding and and that kind of stuff. And how it's hard to get out of relationships like that, no matter what the circumstances. And those things are very true. But as this goes on and on. He seems less interested in investing time in this, and she seems like she's getting like the picture. Or there was an official restraining order. <laughs> or, or, I don't know. Um, again, same as last week. They all could be acting, lying, scripted. Who knows? Who cares? Well, I care enough to talk about it. But it's a, a curious set of circumstances, which bears, you know, commenting on, I think. Um, her, I'm not lying, I changed my mind. The, I can't translate that into a way in my head that feels okay. The only way I could see that ever, because I don't like lying or changing my mind, because changing your mind makes you sound unreliable. And I wouldn't want an unreliable friend or boyfriend either. If that was their shick and they said, oh, I'm unreliable, you guys know how I am. Sorry, I can't be perfect like you. How obnoxious and petty. We don't think we're perfect. We just think lying is bad. Okay? Bad enough that we try not to do it. Not try to do it and not get away from it. And Chantal's conception that if you get caught in a lie and it's exposed, it never happened. Like, that's, you know, I don't know. Um, I was going to stick to my word, but you guys know I'm unreliable. Unreliable is not a good quality to have. And what have you done to work on it? I mean, it was the New Year's resolution of hers to try to stick to her word. Yeah, I might as well try to learn how to fly. Um, it's, I don't think it's going to happen. Because I don't think she thinks it's a problem. She's already decided it's not lying. Which means that she can write out, you know, that's her plea. <laughs> In any case. Well, I wasn't lying. I just, I wasn't lying on the stand. I just changed my mind about what I was going to say. You never change your mind, your honor. Anyway, 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 anyway. So... Have a little sidebar here. Boxes and cleanliness. Now, her home is filthy. She'll tell you as much. Why and how does it get that way? 
when they moved in, I, I don't know if there was a specific discussion. For some reason in my head, I had the idea that Chantal, Chantal tells you she does most of the cleaning when people ask about what the fuck do you do there because Pete seems to have a life and you don't. She does most of the cleaning and the cooking. Okay. Movers were going to come and do the boxes, according to her. And she orders out because she doesn't feel like cooking. So, really? Really like that? It's going to be like that. Um, Pete's is not cleaning because probably it wasn't his part of the agreement. You know, she's like, oh, I'll clean and I'll do this and on the dun 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 and nothing got done. And it happens like that. She leaves it there until it's too much. And then she has to pay to have someone do it or take a whole day and do it. A little bit of it. Breaking down a freaking box is not difficult. It's not that hard to do. And to do it one a day when it comes in. And to move your shit from your door to your curb. Yes, there's stairs, of course. But that's not, like, a thing. If you're handicapped to the point where you can't do the stairs, then you need to think about that and find a first floor apartment. If you don't intend on changing the shape of your body or your physical fitness to take those stairs and do what other people do, you know, then, then oh well, you're going to have to get another kid. You know, people are joking on some of the chats. It was funny about Natter and uh, James, Pete's being children of hers. And on payday, she has to pay the both of them, pay the rents, get them food, get them all snuggled in for the month. And then she can go have her own fun after that. So I don't know. They're both adults. The bottom line is if the house is dirty, they're both almost 40. What the hell? Clean your house. Especially if you're going to film in it. I mean, if your house was filthy, it wouldn't matter if you filmed only from your car or only vlogging outside. No one would be any of the wiser. But if you're going to show off your filthy home and then try to, like, write it off like, yeah. I mean, if it was a dorm room, sure, but you'd be about 19. You're almost twice that, if not twice that. So, no, no, I don't feel some sort of way. As soon as you talk about cleaning, she starts talking about mental health. And then she gets real with herself, and then she's like, no, I'm lazy. Yeah, you're lazy. Clean your house. It's not a lot to ask of an adult to do. It shouldn't even be a discussion, usually, amount, around adults. Usually when those discussions around whose turn is it to clean, who's doing the dishes. Like, when I lived with, like, four 20-year-olds in college, those were the kind of discussions you have. Because no one's really lived with people, no one knows their boundaries, where to step in, what to say. Because we're all new at... Um, a lot of us were new at living with each other. People had lived with their parents or maybe even on their own. But for dorm living, we lived with a group of people. And I don't think, like, and those are the rules we had. You know, dirty a dish, you clean a dish. You know, if you're the last one to fill up the garbage, you take it out and you put the new bag in. Like, all those silly little things. They just, nothing. If I don't do it, someone will do it. And I think they both had that attitude, which is why nothing got done. Nothing got done. I think they each hoped the other one would cave and do the cleaning. And it didn't seem to happen. So, missing. I said earlier, she went missing for a couple days. Well, missing. She went missing a couple days this week. And a couple mornings, we had like a morning bees, sort of. Um, people were hitting her with questions. Where are you going? What are you doing tonight? I'm not at Natter's. I'm not at Natter's. And if I was, if I changed my mind and want to go there, that's not a lie. I didn't lie. I just changed my mind. That's not going to fly. That's not going to fly. At best, it paints you as unreliable and untrustworthy because you changed your mind on the car ride from here to 7-Eleven that you'd rather go over to your ex's house um, to see if he has friends visiting. No, 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 no. So the time that she's missing, she said earlier, people assume she's with Natter because she said, you guys know when I'm missing, I'm with Natter. So she says she wasn't there. She doesn't elaborate on what she was doing, which means she was there because she was told not to talk about it. She ruins it for herself. She could have a nice little thing on the side with this guy. I don't know. You really don't have nice little side sex with people with gonorrhea, usually. And you should know... I've never had police interaction, and I've dated some schmucks in a relationship. I've never been screaming in the street, knocking at doors at four in the morning. And I was an active alcoholic and a bit of a drug user in the mix. You know, here there, I'd go through your medicine cabinet. And I lived a very messy life, a very messy life. And the cops weren't called to the house for domestic stuff 
or because I'm there at three in the morning and I need my shit. It's a waste of police time. It's a waste of professionals time to schedule appointments and then cancel them because somebody else's doggy might have got in that day. Or somebody else with cancer who needs to get fitted for a nice wig goes that day. Um, or someone who knows what they're doing putting it on might not cut the whole lace out of it. Um, but <sighs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So was she missing? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? She also insisted she's not Ashley. Who is Ashley? Who made up Ashley? I don't know who Ashley is. Chantal says she's not Ashley. It wouldn't surprise me if she made a fake account to go trail him and try to trick him because she's done it because she said so. Um, possible. Possible. Is Ashley just another person in the room that Natter talks to? Eh. Is it a troll? Eh. I don't know. Is it matter really? Not really. There's so many other girls around. She's still fixated on Dee Dee. She brings up the same shit that she's upset about weeks later. Like, after it's... You had Dee Dee there for a week. You're still upset. She's still upset about it. Because she's still going on about it. And, like, it's happening in real time. Like, she's always going to be pissed about that. I think she's pissed because put on a line to choose between the two of them. At least for time spent. It seems like he's spending more time with her. Or talking to her. Because it's constant drama talking to Chantal. How could you not understand that all that sturm and drag is a turn-off? Turn-off. Love isn't enough sometimes. Let's say he did love Chantal. No one knows what's behind closed doors, though I have a pretty damn good feeling. But I don't 100%. So let's say he did say, I love you, Chantal. Does that even matter in the face of the rest of the way the relationship has gone? No. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not as relevant a fact. I mean, anyone who says they love me and then all the things she alleges. We don't know what it's like off camera. It's beautiful. And then when she's mad, you don't know what it's like off camera. He's took my phone for three days and he sat there and yelled at me for six hours. Don't go over there. <laughs> if you go over there and get yelled at, a thinking person would say, don't go back over there because I don't like being yelled at. So she's off in some way. Is she off because of her maladaptive relationship building skills, stuff like that? Maybe her distress tolerance isn't as high as it could be. Just saying. Um, and if he cuts her loose and does go with Dee Dee, even as a friends with benefits thing or whatever, it doesn't mean the last nine months were lies. Um, it just means he changed his mind. And you didn't find out first. He has no obligation to tell you. He didn't lie. So we're going to play by your rules. If we can't play by human rules, we'll play by your rules. Um, he just changed his mind. He's like, nope, not that anymore. Dee Dee, over here. So, and yeah, it hurts. Even if you're a bitch, it hurts. <laughs> you know? Of course it does. No one likes getting dumped or having a messy breakup or anything like that. Or still having feelings for the person, even if they were a shitbag afterwards. I had an ex who was kind of cruel and he was kind of stupid. He made fun of my looks. He made fun of the way I drank. He was also very rich. So when we would go to the bar, I'd open a tab on his Amex and just let it ride. Because that'll show him. I'll get so intoxicated I need to get my stomach pumped. That'll really learn him. Huh? It doesn't work that way. But I did not, after the fact, feel so good about going into that relationship. But I, I got into it. I thought I liked him at the time. He seemed decent enough. And all of a sudden he would start insulting the way I looked. I was very thin at the time. I was about 150 pounds. I'm six foot tall. So I was at like the peak of a restricting regime. And dude would make fun of my extra skin and stuff like that. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> you know, after the fact, I can say that now. But at the time, I was devastated. I was so devastated because I really, really needed him to like me. Really needed him to like me. It was filling some space I didn't even know was there. But I really needed him to like me. And I was willing to do humiliating shit like Chantal is willing to do to make a complete fool of herself over this guy because she hopes maybe they'll end up back together someday. It's not what you imagine. I don't think it's what she imagines at all. It's not the bright and roses and we're going to go stay in hotel and he's going to cook me baba ganoush forever. She's not going to be on YouTube forever. Remember when, what was it? Snapchat? Not Snapchat. What am I thinking? Vine! Things go away just like that. Sometimes. You can't count on places like this being a steady source of revenue forever. You could make an ass ton real quick and try to live off of it. I mean, if Amberlynn Reed lived a little more simply... 
you know, she could probably have stacked enough at this point to live quite comfortably and not do YouTube for a while, or until she got a real job or something like that. But at any rate, at any rate, um, another little sidebar. Feeding time. She's eaten a lot. Is this worth mentioning? Yeah, because she's eaten a lot and she has food issues. To me, it's just another spilling out of she's fucked up in the head this week, particularly, and some other stuff's going on. I'm surprised that she's not using more edibles than she did before, because that was kind of her go-to way to cope. And she's doing a little bit of edibles and a little bit of eating. And I know THC can increase your appetite, too, and kind of make food taste a little better than it actually is, or make weird combinations taste good. So she's all over that, because she likes all that shit even when she's sober. So I'm surprised that she's using food more than her smoking and stuff. She still is. I mean, she's not not. But let's say there was... Just throwing a number out there. Let's say there was 20 videos this week. Maybe in eight of them she was super, super high. Like, it wasn't that much. And it wasn't a lot of videos this week, actually. But, um, she's eating a lot. So it's something concerning. And is it because she's fat? Not particularly. If a person who had, you know, uh, an average weight, um, was eating four meals a day on camera, it would still be concerning. It would still be very concerning. This is out of... She hasn't binged or eaten a lot of fast food on camera in a while. She thinks this is a dig to Natter because he always makes her such healthy, clean food and she eats crap. Again, you know, I'm gonna drink poison and hope you die. You know, it doesn't... It doesn't get back at anybody. Behaviors that hurt us never get back at anybody else. Like self-injury or anything else like that. It's like, I'll show you, I'll hurt me. It doesn't show anybody anything. You can't make them feel bad into loving you. Or guilt them into doing it. Or try to make people feel bad for us hurting ourselves. And saying the reason we did it is because of something they did. Remember, they're not responsible for our feelings. We are. And for our reactions. So if we can't keep our shit together, then we can't be put ourselves into certain situations. If I'm too emotionally volatile to be in a relationship, then I can't do that. I can't bring... There's nothing good to bring to the table. You know, what did Chantal bring now? Money? Um... A lot of free time, and she likes to have sex. So it was a good fit for a friend with benefits that you could lavish presents on. But if she wanted anything more than that, she probably should have told him first. So she's eating, she's eating, she's eating. So the last couple days, she's in a hotel. Why the fuck is she in a hotel, and why is she by herself? And is she by herself? I don't have the energy for these dramas. But she, on camera live streamed twice and she went to Windsor and allegedly she was going to go that direction to do a collab with Carly Steele and Carly Steele's boyfriend. Now in real time as I'm filming this she's taking pictures of herself getting ready to go and she's just getting ready to go to go do the collab so if there's anything interesting I'll put it in the note under here but as of right now there's no new footage for me to review so this is where we are. So she's planning this trip with him or not with him, but probably, I think people thought with him, I thought with him. Because whenever she goes out of town to either a hotel or wherever, she usually has company. So she left, and she's at the hotel. Alone. By herself. Um, staying at a hotel in winter. Um, food collaboration. And she's filming a vlog. So she's getting high, and then filming in a hotel room, and that's what counts for work for her. Um... And I hate to break it to all of us, but she makes pretty good money doing it. <laughs> Am I jealous? No, because I'd have to live the rest of her life, too. And I don't want to do that. Um, I don't want to have that few of friends and few of people in life. You know, she says that she keeps her circle small on purpose. Um, and that she deliberately cuts off relationships and has a smaller circle of people because they can't be trusted. Um, and But then she... You know, when she turned around to Dee Dee and said, you know what, you can have him, take him, he's yours. Have fun with this, this, that, that, that. That is like the battle cry of the jealous. You know, he's yours, honey, just take him. Bitch, you took him. You're, you're gone. You're yesterday's fupa. <laughs> Back of the line. Go hunting. There was a uh, thing that came up. She said she was having a, a new boyfriend. It was in the community post. The new boyfriend. Okay. A few of, like... She has a preference. She'll say it's non-discrimination. 
And it, to an extent it is. She doesn't discriminate against lovers. She seems to only have a pattern with lovers, aside from Pete's, who don't speak English as a first language, um, who are from other parts of the world than Canada, um, who don't drive, uh, who don't tend to come from a lot of money and have in uncertain citizenship status of some sort. This guy's got a record. I don't think Dee Dee did. She goes after a certain type of individual. I would be remiss to not mention that she may select a certain type of individual for a partner because the setup of the relationship leans power in her direction. She speaks the language easily. She almost speaks a little French, too. Um locally. Like, Nader doesn't speak barely any English. And I don't know if his mumbling is to hide that his English isn't great, or if he's just a mumbly speaking blech. Hard for me to tell. Um, I can understand most of what he says. You know, I do throw some subtitles on here and there, but for the most part, I can understand what he says. I work with people from a lot of places. And if, once you tune in, you can kind of get the accent and the way things are going. But, nevertheless. So, she's in this hotel room, apparently alone, and she's Streaming. Having, what was she having? Maple syrup liqueur. And then ordering food. And then she got a bottle of Grey Goose. Like, she bought enough liquor for, like, two or three people for a few days. Unless she's gonna binge both bottles hard in a couple nights, she's not finishing it. So she'll probably bring it home. Unless it's for two. But I don't think Windsor is as close to where she was going as I think he is. I don't know, my Canadian geography is bad. So, while she's in the hotel, she doxed herself. And people were calling and ordering pizzas. The phone was ringing. She's in the live with a little buzz on, a little bit of edible, a little bit of liquor. And she keeps getting up and the phone in the hotel room keeps ringing. And she's like, hello, no, I didn't order pizza. The next room, hello, no, I didn't order that. The front desk is calling. She pulls the phone out of the wall at one point. So it wouldn't ring. But, so people knew where she was. Um, but I didn't see Natter in the video. And the lives were like an hour. So either he was hanging out with friends in Windsor and she drove and she's hotel beason. And the whole collaboration thing was either happening to, or it was a lie. And it was just a chance to get out of town with him. That's possible. It's possible she planned to go with him and he straight stood her up. And she's going alone for I don't know what reason. She just hung out, drank, and talked to the chat. And eventually when she was chatting about nothing to do with Nat or Dee Dee, you get a few drinks in her and it's all she would talk about. So she went in two parts doing the live in the hotel. There was part one and part two. And that's it. She just sat around. And then we got on Nader. And it's Nader over and over again. I'm like, it's not super interesting for a viewer. From a viewer who likes her channel. From their perspective. It's not... It's not new. Like, yes, Chantal is dishonest. Yes, Chantal has a bad relationship with her ex. Uh, yeah, Chantal is a little bit estranged from her family. Um, those These aren't new. So the things that get outlandish and distance between the two of them, like, you know how it's been happening like every month and every month that you think it can get more outrageous and then every month a few more people think she's being honest and then you find out two days later they made up and they're back together. Counting their money. <laughs> from all the people who resubscribe to her channel, who re-beezed, um... And who just are there for the train rock of it, too. So, in the hotel, she ordered food. Because she's working. She was working. Um, two drinks in, like I said, and she was on Natter already. It was so unfortunate. Um, she has no one to share it with. She has all this money and all this great stuff in her life. And she can travel and go do whatever she wants, like everyone else is. She's alone. She's alone. Isn't it nice to have my big pile of boxes and my big pile of money that I'm alone and can only keep the company of a man I buy things for? You can do better. You know, 40's not too late to turn it around. So, Mark won't be joining us for some drug and alcohol thoughts because there, weren't, there wasn't as much to lay into. But I will say this about cross-addiction between things. Um, when she wasn't partying, she couldn't put her fork down, couldn't put the food down. And then all of a sudden we're out and we're in clothes and a wig and this and that and we're going out and I'm not going to eat today because I ate so much yesterday for the, you know, for five people. 
you can put on a lot of weight in one day. And I think that's probably how she ends up gaining weight. She gains weight on a binge, doesn't want to see what the scale says, so she doesn't look. And then there's another one, and another one, and she doesn't want to look, and then gets on, and is horrified, and then lies about what it said, more or less. Um, so, I don't know her again. So, we'll see. I'm here for it. I hope you'll be here for it, too. So, thank y'all for watching. Please do subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get alerts when we have new videos and when we go live. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, our email address, and our contact info, P.O. Box. It's all listed below as well. Thank you again, and I will catch up with you tomorrow. Mark and I go live at 6 p.m. Eastern on weekends, on, sa on Sundays. Sometimes we do a Saturday live, but usually not. Um, tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll be going live. You can come in and be a lurker. You can come in and chat. It's an open chat. Uh, no topic. Booty Beauty comes up. Other folks come up, too. And it's real chill. We have good mods. It's, you know, not usually super crowded. So feel free to drop in and say hi. Thanks for watching. Bye.